Hello, everyone, and welcome to Episode 7 of Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here each week bringing you awesome tips, tidbits, and information with Dr. Vincent Martin, MD. He is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Martin. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. So today we have this awesome topic that I think is, is not as well known as some of the topics that we've discussed before. We're going to talk about headaches that are related to cerebrospinal fluid and to low pressure in that fluid, or sometimes it's called low volume. Um, before I start, I want to make sure we tell people that any new headache they have, they should go talk to their physician, uh, regardless of what kind of headache it seems like. We always want people to do that. But let's, uh, let's discuss first what cerebrospinal fluid is. Well, there's a sac of fluid that surrounds the brain and also sur surrounds the, sp the spinal cord. Probably acts as a shock absorber. So you can imagine if you get hit in your head, that if you have this sac of fluid around the brain, that that's going to kind of cushion its blow against this very hard skull. So it probably protects the brain and the spinal cord from injury. Right. So we call it CSF for short, uh, cerebrospinal fluid, and it's obviously very important for the health of your brain. Um, so let's discuss uh, what a low pressure or low volume headache is. Well, people often describe low pressure headaches as headaches that get worse when they stand up and better when they lie down. Uh, and we, in medical terms, we call that orthostatic headaches. Orthostatic just means standing up, worse standing up, better lying down. Mm -hmm. But there can also be other symptoms. For example, some patients may state that the only time they're completely headache free is when they wake up in the morning because sometimes you have to remain lying down for a prolonged time period mm -hmm. before the headache actually goes away. Mm -hmm. And another subtle symptom might be that your headaches are, are pretty good in the morning, but then as the day goes on, as you've been up longer periods of time, you've been standing more, the headaches actually tend to worsen. And what that usually indicates when there's a very convincing history is there, there could be a leak of spinal fluid. Okay. Well, let's talk for a second about what causes a leak of spinal fluid. I know that I've seen people who had uh, spinal taps or spinals done or some sort of anesthetic procedure where they will develop a leak. Uh, what are all the reasons or how, how does this happen to us? Well, you mentioned the most common cause. That would be a spinal tap. So if you put a needle through that sac that houses the spinal fluid, mm -hmm. then sometimes there can be a leak. Or if you have an epidural, say for pregnancy, normally that needle doesn't go through the sac, but sometimes it, they'll just go a little bit too far and create a leak. Those are the most obvious ones. But many people have a genetic condition that causes the, that sac to have to be more elastic than other people and more likely to tear. Mm -hmm. And those people often have a disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Another name for it is hypermobility syndrome or Marfan syndrome. So they, they have a genetic reason why that sac is more likely to tear and break. Mm -hmm. In addition, patients who have spinal procedures where they actually have to go through the, the sac may have a leak afterwards. Um, or if you have a spinal cord stimulator place, that, that'll go through the sac and also that you can have leaks from that as well. And they can be pretty subtle. You know, patients may have these leaks for even decades and not know it. Like, uh, say, for example, a woman whose headaches begin right after pregnancy and they have an epidural and they'll have these headaches, many of which can resemble migraine, but they have a positional component. And then this can go on for years. And then you finally uh, find out what the problem is and the headaches can, can go away. Right. Well, let's, let's talk about that really quick. Uh, can, can a low pressure headache that goes on for a long time mimic migraine or can it maybe even occur along with migraine? Uh, can, can that happen? Does it happen? Well, they can either occur in isolation without migraine. And in that case, it's probably a little, a little bit more obvious. But the reality is that in most cases, patients have both migraine and low pressure headaches but they just haven't really put the, you know, made the connection yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the headaches of, that are low pressure tend to be more commonly localized in the back of the head, and, uh, but they can have all the same symptoms of migraine. Mm -hmm. So they can get sense to be light, right. noise, and nausea. So they can be very difficult to differentiate. 
Um, and many doctors don't even ask about the positional component of the headache, so they right. can be missed. Right, so let's just review that really quick. So most of the time, the low pressure ones are slightly different from a migraine in that they hurt back here and that they are positional. When you sit up, it's gonna feel worse than when you're laying down, which is not a normal characteristic of migraine. Now I wanna uh, say, one, I wanna say one other thing though, mm -hmm. is that oftentimes, when a migraine patient will lie down, they will feel better. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking right. about where the headache almost either goes completely That's away nice. with lying down or there's a like a 75% or greater improvement. So that's one problem with, with migraine patients is lying down and falling asleep right. will often make the headaches better. So yeah. it, it's really, if it's an extremely convincing history that, that would make me think more of a low pressure headache. Okay. Um, so my last question is, um, this is one of the headaches that if we diagnose it correctly and we find it, we can treat it, which is a great thing. So let's talk about what we can do. I know that there's things like blood patches that we can do. Uh, why don't you tell us what happens once you find out that if this is actually what you have? Well, the first thing is to make a diagnosis. Uh, and you can make a diagnosis. There's certain uh, findings you can see on an MRI of the head that would suggest a low pressure headache. Um, you can do, a, believe it or not, a spinal tap to diagnose it. And if the pressures are really low on the spinal tap, even though that might induce a leak itself, but if it's right. real low, that could suggest it. And then sometimes to localize where the leak is, you have to do something called a myelogram, which is where they do a spinal tap and inject dye mm -hmm. in that big sac. And sometimes they can identify where the leak is. Okay. So, so the first thing is diagnosis. And then the second thing would be then treatment. So most of the time, a treatment is going to be a blood patch. And that's just simply where you take blood out of someone's arm and you inject a certain volume in an area around the spinal cord where you think the leak might be with, an, with the thought that it might close the leak. Mm -hmm. And that works much of the time, but there are some rare instances where you need to have surgery to close the leak. Okay. All right. It's, it's interesting in that poking it again is, is the cure for it being poked, but it, <laughs> it, sounds, uh, it sounds like a procedure. I think what's good about these headaches is there is something we can do about them. And, and I, I love that fact. So was there anything else you wanted to say about low pressure or low volume headaches before we close for today? The only thing else I would say is there's certain institutions or medical centers that have more expertise in dealing with people with low pressure headaches. At Cincinnati, we've, we've been interested in this for about the last four years. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other centers, say at Duke, Mayo Clinic, out at Stanford, and there's other medical centers as well that have taken an interest in this. We have conferences once a year to discuss these issues um, as well. Um, so it's something that's gaining increasing recognition. Right. And there could be some instances that people have chronic migraine in the audience that you, they think they've got chronic migraine, Right. but then we have low pressure headaches. Right, that's why I think this topic is so interesting. So uh, that is us today signing out uh, from Heads Up, and we will see you next week with a brand new topic and new information. Good night, everybody.